007 Goldeneye by Rare. A necessity for gracious living. There is no doubt that it is amongst the most iconic games ever made. While extremely dated in comparison to modern first-person shooters, I would bet money that if you approached normies in the street and asked them what the greatest video game ever created was, a large proportion of those people would tell you GoldenEye. This Nintendo 64 title revolutionised the field of first-person shooters on game consoles, brought friends and family together for four-player couch co-op fun, and would prove so popular that the game would even outsell The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This was one of those titles that gamers simply couldn't put down, and were always seeking to get more out of. With GoldenEye being released into a world before, most of us were sad losers, living most of our lives online. There was an element of mystery to game exploration that is largely absent today. Which brings me round to talking about the quest to unlock other James Bonds in the game, beyond the one portrayed by Pierce Brosnan. I am Lady Decade and this is the mystery of 007 GoldenEye's All Bond Mode. The late 90s were amazing times. Crash television, economic prosperity, the Spice Girls, fuzzy picture frames. I mean, what was there not to love? We lived in a completely different world back then. Times were so drastically different now that this has led to the greatest cultural gap between two generations in history, with Zoomers having no concept of what life was like for millennials growing up, and all people before that. Perhaps the most beautiful thing about this old world is that we were yet to live lives online, with the internet largely being considered this nerdy thing that you dip in and out of, rather than engineering the entirety of one's life around it. Couch co-op games like GoldenEye were a part of day-to-day -day life, and friends would meet together regularly to indulge in multiplayer first-person shooter fun. Living in a world whereby the internet was not as prevalent yet, a lot of information about games would spread by word of mouth, rather than through websites and social media platforms. This meant that if a rumour was started about a game, people would just take the information with a pinch of salt, often trying out suggested dubious tips and tricks for themselves. Still, you could say that ignorance was bliss, as this added an extra layer, a sense of mystery and intrigue to gaming that Zoomers would simply never be able to understand, as they will just culturally look to Google for answers. You could say our ignorance was bliss. Still, we did have one more source for our gaming information. Gaming magazines. Back then, if we wanted gaming news, tips, tricks and reviews, magazines would be our go-to source to get the scoop. But what was often amusing about this print press was that they would be the ones who would often intentionally start rumours and spread misinformation on gaming topics, rather than always steering their readerships in the right direction. Take Electronic Gaming Monthly, for example. They would take it upon themselves to make it a tradition that every year on the 1st of April, they would put a fake gaming story out there, with perhaps the most famous example being how to unlock the secret Shen Long boss fight in Street Fighter 2, a story that would trick gamers and later inspire Capcom themselves to include Akuma as a hidden boss in the game. 
another example of their trickery which would spread like wildfire would occur on April Fool's Day in 1998 when they would provide some info on how to unlock what seemed like a super exciting feature in one of the world's most beloved games, Goldeneye. The gaming revelation they would publish would show images of being able to play as four more different James Bond's Goldeneye. Roger Moore, Sean Connery, Timothy Dalton and even George Lazenby. An exciting prospect for the fan of this classic game. How they would lay out to achieve this though was far from simple, as first players would have to unlock the Aztec stage, an area whereby most gamers were not skilled enough to, to be able to secure anyway, as it required for them to beat the title on its hardest difficulty setting, Double O Agent Mode, which was an extremely tall order in itself. Still, this was just one step in unlocking the coveted foursome, as further from this, gamers would be required to go into the game's cheat options screen and set the enemy accuracy and reaction speed to 100%, their health to 200% and then beat the Aztec stage in under 9 bloody minutes. This sounds like a jobst for Carl Jobst. If players were able to achieve this tough as nails feat, the all bonds cheat would be unlocked, allowing gamers to play as all the bonds from previous movies. Seems legit. With many players not noticing the date that the article was published, they would rush to their Nintendo 64s to unlock the joys of playing as George Lazenby. But no matter how hard their little fat sweaty hands worked, the star of Her Majesty's Secret Service would be beyond their grasp. This would lead to EGM receiving a fair amount of hate mail regarding their hoax, which would just provide further evidence that they pulled off a successful April Fool's Day gag. Could you imagine the fan outrage? No, no, no! Stop getting Bond wrong! By this point though, the story was already out there and word of mouth had quickly spread that playing as Bonds other than Brosnan in Goldeneye was indeed possible. This was further exacerbated by the fact that other magazines and even early gaming news websites would parrot the information or even put their own spin on the story, suggesting other ways that these legendary playable characters were unlockable, such as using GameShark codes. But like in any interesting game tale, while most of this was complete fiction underneath all this codswallop there would be a story that is more interesting than fiction, which is why I have brought you here today. While unlocking these characters in convoluted ways simply isn't possible, all you have to do is look in the game's official manual that came with the game to realise there is far more to this story than a simple hilarious prank. As if you look closely on page 10, there is a picture of a bloody multi-match taking place, featuring none other than Sean Connery, who can be spotted unmistakably by the fact that he is wearing his iconic white dinner jacket paired with a rose corsage. The exact attire that he can be seen wearing in the movie Goldfinger. Mind blown. So there we have it, Sean Connery from Goldfinger in physical print official media that was sold with the game. So somewhere or at least at some point, you could play as Bonds in this game who were not Brosnan. So what was the true story that was going on here? 
While those with a keen eye may have been perplexed by this image in the manual back in the day, the truth would eventually come out with a recent retelling of this tale taking place in a 2020 interview with one of the GoldenEye devs. Simon Bland of TheIndependent.co.uk would interview Martin Hollis, a man who would lead a rare team to produce Goldeneye at the tender age of just 24. The computer science graduate from Cambridge University recalls that when they were developing the game, they were told they had the licensing rights to use any characters or pieces of hardware that had appeared in any Bond film. Basically, they saw the James Bond universe as theirs for the picking, with the rights for them to cherry pick whatever elements they loved about the franchise to include in their game. They had a Bond license, not just the one for GoldenEye, so nothing to them seemed off limits. Their quest to make a Bond dream game would see the team plan to include Sean Connery, Roger Moore and Timothy Dalton alongside Pierce Brosnan, so the four of them could face off in four-player multiplayer fun, much like in the Marvel superhero multiverse stuff, years before it had actually been done on the big screen. But it has to be said that there were no plans to include George Lazenby. Sorry, Lazenby fans. Oh. Anyway, part of the inspiration for including multiple Bonds would be so that fans could pick their favourite Bond and truly find out which Bond is best. But one thing is clear, it's not poor Lazenby. But this plan came to a grinding stop when company lawyers stated to them that they were not particularly effusive about the idea. It would appear that fears would arise in the development of litigation as by including four different bonds in the game, all with very distinct faces, an argument could be made that Rare didn't have the license to do so. This is because they had the license to include the character James Bond and not the likeness of four different actors who portrayed him. So this cool feature would sadly be left on the cutting room floor. What is interesting though is that evidence of these characters being included in the game could be found if fans looked hard enough. In 2005, a ROM editor who goes by the name of The Rare Witch Project would confirm that the Bond pictures representing Connery and Co were indeed still in the game. Therefore, photographs of the actors can be found in the title, along with all the textures that are required for the game to display these characters. Nice. With regards to rumours of there being Game Shark cheats to play as the Forbidden Threesome, unfortunately, this is not possible due to the characters' head and body models being completely removed from the game. However, deformed looking versions of these characters can be recreated via laying their textures over other character models. Moving through time, those crazy people we call modders and hackers have been able to use what is available to finally allow gamers to play as James Bonds from the 007 multiverse, meaning that although EGM's 1st of April tips and tricks article was a hoax, Roger Moore, Sean Connery and Timothy Dalton in Goldeneye are very much real. So I am Lady Decades and Nobody does it better. Like and subscribe and comment and stuff. Now I'll answer a question from one of my patrons. Today's one is from Attic Chris. He says, how do you feel about the Soulsborne games? Uh, Dark Souls, Sekiro, and Elden Ring, etc. Well, to be honest, if you had to, Chris, 
not a lot because as a fake gamer I find these too difficult they're not turn-based RPG -y enough for me so if you would like your question answered at the end of one of my videos then please consider becoming a backer over on Patreon. Thank you so much for sticking around until this point in the video and I shall see you all in the next one.